Sixth and final heat. The overall leaders will be right next to each other in lanes four and five. Amanda Barnhart and Emma Carey sit atop the overall standings. Barnhart is our leader, but she's only three points up on Emma Carey. Barnhart coming off the win in test three earlier today. And Emma Carey came into the day three points above Emma Lawson for the first place position, so bumped her down into second. Lawson sitting in third, but Barnhart, Barnhart's an athlete that should do well in this test, but Amanda Fisher, very strong, capable athlete. She's had some great success so far this weekend, looking to build off a lot of momentum she had early on in test one and during Linda earlier this morning. But what things you would like to see, Big scales, big weights, odd objects. We're looking for that third one coming up here with big weights. And she has a big target on her back, 11th place overall. That's the final qualifying spot to the CrossFit Games. We start with the 800 meter run. Amanda Fisher, All-American College softball player at the University of Wisconsin. She's on teams the last two years, seventh and sixth, so just outside those qualifying spots on a team. Two places and then one place, so she decided to switch it over to individual. She's been working on her engine coming into this weekend. I mean, look at her finishing places so far. Sitting in 11th place, as you said, she got second to start the weekend. Second place to start the weekend. That was very engine and had some strength in that sled. 18th in a Linda earlier this morning. Now Emma Lawson on the right side. Here's the crazy thing, still sitting in third place after that tough finish of 20th this morning. Two women who started their CrossFit Games careers as teenagers. This was the game's podium in 2019 for the teenagers. Emma Carey took first, and Emma Lawson took third. Probably not the last time we're going to see those two women on a CrossFit Games podium. Yeah, yeah. Then, you know, we'll see what order they're going to be in, but how, how their careers have started off so far here in the open individual competition scene has been absolutely incredible. The 210 pounds is still the top lift we have seen in this test, courtesy of Danielle Perrin. So Amanda Barnhart, who again was the only woman to go sub-12 on test three earlier today. Obviously, Amanda with her 800 meter, 800 meter run to that this is the athlete I'm looking at, Fisa Gaffey. She got eight in Linda this morning. Fisa Gaffey's crux has always been the heavy weight. She's great in gym, good gymnastic skill sets. This is gonna be the test that could possibly make or break her weekend. This snatch coming up is pretty much been that bulletin board event for her for the entire weekend coming in. She's in fourth place overall right now with 231 points. Daniel Brandon next to her. Brandon in sixth place overall with 225 total points. Started this competition with a win in test number one. But since then, she's been outside the top 10, a 16th and then a 12th. Now, Daniel Brandon, the last couple of years, working her way up the leaderboard at the games, getting fourth last year at the 2022 Noble Frosted Games. But I talked to her coach, Matt Torres, and one of the biggest things they've been working on this offseason is getting her healthy. So she's been battling injury in and out all the last couple of years of competition, but this year is one of the first years that she's been coming into live competition, healthy, ready to rock. Just about every judge has his or her hand in the air. And then we will get to the portion of this test that counts. And looking at the placards on the floor, everything is between 165 and 175. It's like Amanda Fisher. Fisher off first. And here comes Emma Lawson. Sean, it's absolutely incredible what these athletes have been able to do in just a two minute time frame. Amanda Barnhart is off. She's going to open at 165. Lawson makes 175 to open. Fisher is good at 175. And for Lawson, that, that was a nice, clean 
lift. And we've seen some struggles on the first rap here and there, but you know, even Alexis Rapp has hit 165. Emma Carey going for 175. Danielle Brandon made 175. Emma Carey at 175. So Alexis Rapp is at 165. With Lawson's jumping up to 185. Powers is jumping up to 185. Emma Lawson just made 185. Fisher in the back there is at 190. Lawson at 75 and 85 in less than 40 seconds. But Paige Powers just made 185. Fee Sagafi at 165. It's good for Fee. I think for Fee, she gets close to 180. That is, that is enough to keep her there. Kind of that mid-pack, maybe top third. Daniel Brandon make one, makes 185. Emma Carey, 185. And you just saw Alexis Raptus closest to the screen there, make 175. Now Emma Lawson at 195. As Amanda Barnhart just made 185. That's going to count for Lawson. Fisher is going to make 190. So Lawson at 195. Looks like Brandon may have 195 in the bar, top right side of your screen, along with Paige Powers. Well, Paige Powers has a two in there, so we'll see where she's going to go. Paige Powers at 200. Barnhart 190 for 195 Barnhart. 195 for Barnhart. Paige Powers has 200 pounds on the barbell. Now, this would put her in fourth as Lawson can't make 205. Fisher has made her lift, and Paige Powers made hers. Paige Powers getting 200 at the buzzer. And if you can get top five in both of these tests from four to five, that is Huge for your overall score. Again, these tests are 100 points apiece. Well, keep an eye on the back. Both Amanda Fisher and Paige Powers going for 200 pounds. That's big for Paige Powers. She's another athlete inside a qualifying position right now. 220 points, eighth place overall. and. For Fisher to make that, again, 11th place for her. They're tied in points with Kiara Napoli at 173. So she's looking to put her some distance between herself and the women immediately behind her in the overall standings as we now get set for test five. Uh, so remember, Napoli actually won her heat earlier, so she had a very good time in test number five. Eight snatches at 125 into an 800-meter air run to finish. To look at Emma Lawson. There's Danielle Brandon, who just put up a score of 195 pounds in test four. Ten seconds. Stand by. And here we go. We were talking to Matt Fraser earlier in the previous heat. It's touch and go all the way. Touch and go all the way. Get to the runner as fast as you can. One of the fastest times to the runner we've seen is 25 seconds. And another thing, Sean, we've had a lot of ties across the board. And the question that came up is, what is the tiebreaker? The tiebreaker for test four is your time for test five. That's how valuable this test is when we're looking at the score overall leaderboard. Just about everybody getting to the runner at the same time. Danielle Kearns in the yellow was the last one there, but we have seen some athletes get there late and make a charge. Think about Calista Lang and Shelby Neal both making a charge earlier. I was speaking to Chris Henshaw earlier about this test in particular and how to approach the second 800 once we're coming off. The eight snatches at 125 as Emmett Carey is just leaning into that pace. And he said the first 200 
might be the most valuable meters to set yourself up for success, either good or bad. You take out the first 200 too fast, that's going to be a long 600 meters to the finish line. But you want to get the belt going as quickly as you can. The second 200 meters, backing off the pace a little bit that you started the first two, it's almost settling in. And then you're halfway home. How does that second 200 feel? Does it feel good? Maybe I lean forward just an extra half an inch. Put my feet a little bit higher on the top end of that curve to bring that belt down a little faster. Using your body weight to aid in the speed on these runners is key. Emma Lawson, three points back of Amanda Barnhart for the overall lead here. Looks like Danielle Brandon is your leader right now. I think people forget that Danielle Brandon is a very good runner. Track and field background. Obviously, she's more well known for her handstand push up, handstand walk prowess, but she is a great runner. Track athlete at Sacramento State. Emma Carey's judge just moved her placard into the final section there. And her judge's hand is in the air. Danielle Brandon's judge's hand is in the air. You know, we talked earlier in this competition about Matt Torres, Emma Carey's coach, telling her to slow down. Now is not that time. Now is not the time. <laughs> Sean, I don't know about you, but I don't smile at the end of any run pace that I do. If you can look at Daniel Brand on the right side, although we saw the same thing at the end of her sled pull in test one. And we'll see who's off first here. And here goes Emma Carey. Wow. And it's going to be Emma Carey taking the heat. Sydney Wells is going to win the test. Brandon is across. And now here comes Emma Lawson. Alexis Raptus is through. Amanda Barnhart had that three-point lead on Carey coming into Barnhart test four and, and Powers five. were racing. Sorry, Chase, and that was dead even. And it's going to be Barnhart winning the race by a half second. Wow. Caroline Stanley is across. Fisa Goffey made it. And now here comes Amanda Fisher. So Danielle Kearns, the only athlete left on the floor here. Emma Carey is going to take second place in that test. Brandon's going to get third, and Lawson will take fourth. We're talking about breaking ties on the snatch portion in test four being the run itself. Barnhart outlifted carry by five pounds. That was a four place separation in test number four, but in test number six with carry getting that second place finish and Barnhart getting seven separated by five. So we may just exchange it three points and we could see a tie at the top of the top leaderboard at the end of this day. Well, we saw a tie here for the top lift. Paige Powers and Amanda Fisher at the end of that window. And then it was Emma Carey off first to finish second, and she is with Mike Arsenal. We'll wait for her to get over there. Paige Powers looks like unofficially eighth overall in test number five after that 200 pound lift at the buzzer in test number four. And here's something that's rare we have our winners of these tests coming from heats that were not the final heat. Daniel Perrin wins from, I think, heat two at 210 pounds, and Sydney Wells from heat three. That's just how deep this field is. Now, Emma Carey is ready with Mike Arsenal. Emma, terrific performance here on test number five. The heat win, not the overall test win, but what is it like having that final race on the air runner with all the other tremendous women in your heat? How do you stay focused on pushing forward to the end where you're able to emerge victor uh, victorious in that heat? It's seriously such a proud moment for me because running's always been something I've tended to struggle with. I was super nervous to be, 
going into this event, and I just kept thinking back to my favorite scripture, which is Proverbs 21, 31. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. And just how grateful I am that victory doesn't rest with me because I am just so imperfect, but I try as hard as I can. I love to suffer and I wanna be used for God's glory. So I'm proud. You mentioned some struggles and uh, your performance so far this weekend looks like you're firmly within that games qualifying spot. So what has been the focus on the off season training to get you in this position, potentially ready to book a ticket to Madison in August? Especially recovering from an injury, mental toughness has been my biggest focus. I've always been good at suffering and just pushing myself past the limits, but mental toughness is more than that. Like it's the ability to take the highs and lows of competition and just keep yourself stable through it all and trust the process and just so many more things beyond suffering. Suffering's my favorite though. So this event, it could kind of all come together. Well, suffering is your favorite. will come in very handy in here in test four and test five. Congratulations. Thank you so much.